Hello YouTube and welcome to another review and this time we have Airfix's 172 scale World War II United States Marines. Um, obviously the United States Marines um, go way back um, to the American Revolution where I think they were first known as Continental Marines and they've been ever present uh, right the way up to the present day and, and now most other armies would be jealous the size the US Marines are. They're absolutely huge. They've got everything anyone could ever want in a military organization. Uh, certainly World War II, um, the Marines had the bad end of the stick there. They were fighting the Japanese. And uh, I know a lot of people say how awful Afghanistan is and things like that, but nothing can compare with uh, what they went through fighting the Japanese. Um, it was really bad. Um, so as a result we have a fairly decent enough kit from Airfix um, and this is covering the uh, United States Marines which uh, we shall take a look at today. Um, what we've got here artwork wise um, obviously we've got the usual actual size figure and we've got Marines there. They look more sort of late war marines um so obviously probably retaken some of the islands um that the japanese were holed up on um they've got a sort of later war camouflage um which was worn um quite often they'd be fully camouflaged with this kind of um camouflage on his helmet here um, we've got a, quite a wide range of weapons on shore here uh, we've got an m1 garand we've got an m1 carbine We've got a Browning automatic rifle, um, pistol here with the officer, and a grease gun. I always call it a grease gun, probably don't even know the actual name for it. Um, so it's quite a wide variety of weapons. Whether or not this variety of weapons are contained in the box, I don't know yet. Um, we'll have a look at that. Um, but the artwork's fairly good. It looks pretty purposeful, and it's showing what the Marines do best, which is uh, obviously a, a seaborne invasion. Um, and obviously it's one of these islands that the Japanese are holed up on. Um, yeah, so I mean that's fairly decent. I'm fairly comfortable with that. Um, side of the box we get a picture of what we're getting. Um, this exciting 45 piece set of the famous Leathernecks in action has a full complement of marines with bazookas, flamethrowers, etc. as well as an inflated assault boat. So um, I didn't know about the flamethrower. I can't remember there ever being a flamethrower in this set. So uh, let's just see, because that's a bit cheeky if they're saying there's a flamethrower in there, because I can't remember one being in there. One fly now, we know that, Airfix Club. Same picture on the side. And here we go. So this is actually showing what we get. Now, there's no flamethrower guy there. Okay, I'm pretty sure there isn't. So I don't know what that's about. So um, I don't know about that. Um, inflatable boat. Um, obviously, it's not like a normal um, whatever the Marines would have used in World War Two. This is for play factor only. It's to, for you to get a couple of soldiers in there and um, just have a muck around. Um, it does float. I've got a little water test going on, so it does actually float. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get four of these guys, four grenade guys, three of these guys, two bazookas, four of these chaps, four of these, which is probably one of the best pieces in the set, four of these, four of these, three of those, four of those, four of those, obviously this is the guy that I detest the most, two of these guys and a couple of uh, the paddle, paddle guys. Um, if you go to Plastic Soldier Review, the Bible, it does state these two are identical and obviously they'd paddle in circles, which is fairly correct. Um, but yes, um, so on paper it looks um, it looks fairly decent, you know. So let us have a look at the sprues. Now, 
this chap here is particularly well detailed so I'm quite liking that, it's got an M1 carbine that I think it is an M1 carbine detail wise it's not bad I'm quite liking what I see it's got lovely details, it's got pockets on his um, trousers here don't know whether you're getting that let's come around the back, he's got a nice complement of equipment on the back as well which I quite like lovely creasing in the trousers he's got his canvas galoshes on which is appropriate, uh, Marines did wear those right up until 45, not all the time um, but they did wear them water bottle yeah I often sort of wondered if this guy was an officer but uh, I don't think he is um, incidentally the 132 set um, which does contain an officer there's no officer in this set um, rather large bayonet there which is good probably you know he can pull that out and hack his way through the jungle I quite like this pose um, he's shooting upwards I think that's quite relevant because um, the Japanese would have been holed up in all sorts of positions um, high up we know they were a good one for running traps and God knows what so I think that's a quite a relevant pose um, like I say nice detail on these figures there's, there's nothing really wrong with that rifles are a bit hard to distinguish but um, you know it's rather difficult with the M1 Garand it's um, the Enfield you can always kind of point out because of the magazine but the M1 Garand you know it's going to be difficult to tell them apart from any other rifle um, bit flashy these um, we've got the assault guy here who's um, obviously he's just landed he's throwing a grenade or something and um, he's getting stuck in there he's got a grease gun the grease gun itself doesn't come out too well it's a little bit flashy um, in fact most of the figures have got touches of flashes around them but this guy is a good figure you can probably see on his helmet there that's quite it's like a Mohican um, so he is a little bit flashy detail on the back is is pretty good it's what you come to expect of um, this period from Airfix but yeah I particularly like this chap he's, he's quite good I mean that's quite a good little sculpt there I think he's pretty good he could be the best figure in the in the set yeah I'm quite liking these they've got um, these guys have got ammunition pouches on water bottle and there's a there's, there's a little bit of equipment on the back it's nowhere near as spartan as the um, 132 set which virtually they have no equipment on but uniform wise I haven't really got a problem with that I think that works as US Marines um, and the good thing about these sets are you can paint them I mean I think they went full camo at one point probably in the later war they went full camo um, or you can paint them um, you know with the standard sort of olive green tunic and trousers um, so you've got a variety of option, options with the marines well yeah that's not not too bad he is quite a quite something this little fella it is nice when they put a little bit of thought in and do away with the base so here we have uh, these are the guys which you'll find in the 132 kit there is a slight size issue but it's very slight um, if you just check that out it's nothing to worry about if anything the figures look just a little bit slender on one sprue to the other um, but I don't think in terms of height I don't think that's an issue the height they seem to have got right but it's just the actual physique of the um, 
the others. So you're talking the original 132 sprue, um, which directly transcends into the, the 172. The figures on that are slightly chunkier, but it's not enough to um, really raise an eyebrow at. Um, I wouldn't just put it off buying these. They're actually not a bad set. Again, quite good detail here. You can quite easily see that's a grease gun. No problem at all there. And we've got a good few of those. Here we have our guy with the M1 uh, carbine. And again, he's uh, your standard fare 132. Turn these ones around. As I did complain, the 132, they're not exactly got masses of equipment, these this lot. Um, so, um, you know, but in 172, they look a hell of a lot better. Uh, 132, if you don't have much equipment, you, you know, you're going to look a bit exposed. Um, and 132 Airfix um, really can look a little bit spartan in ways of equipment. Um, makes the piece look less interesting, but in 172 you can just about get away with it. And these guys do that. Um, the runners, um, well copied, we've seen these runners copied by Chinese, um, you know, copies to the hilt. Um, I've, you know, seen them knocking about in all sorts of shops and markets and things like that. Um, so a much copied piece. Again, it shows good movement, he's running, you can see that it's quite a good little piece. And obviously that'll be an M1 Garand. But yeah, that's pretty good. Nice, I mean you can see the open shirts. Um, I mean it's not a bad set this so far. So far that's keeping me happy. So moving on to our grenade thrower again suffering a bit from flash which is such a pity for this set um, in terms of the plastic um, it's quite soft um, the color is not bad to be honest I think these used to be a lighter green um, but I'm not going to split hairs I don't think the color is too bad on this like I say the pieces are just a little bit flashy and that can be a problem when the 172 because it's a bit more finicky to get off um, again, this looks possibly like, uh, I'd say it's an M1 carbine. I've seen no BAR rifles yet and there's no flamethrowers. So don't buy this set. If you go by the cover, um, you'll be a bit disappointed. Um, bazooka guys, yeah, I mean, this is what you like about the American sets because they do contain, you know, the kitchen sink. So we've got a couple of bazookas going on here. Um, here you'll see the difference which I'm on about just regarding the scale um, this is obviously from your 132 set but it's got a base on and this is your new sculpt for your 172 you can just sort of see there's a little bit of a difference they're the same height and everything they're just a little bit more slender but highly detailed you know they're, they're quite detailed I haven't got a problem with the detail, but again, we've got bits of flash on there. Nice um, guy here. He's obviously operating cautiously, um, either coming up the beach or whatever. He's just cautiously checking out the area. Um, it's a nice pose. You can see his hand quite clearly here on the rifle um, it's pretty good pose to be honest and again it gives you the feeling that he's moving he's just slinking his way possibly up the beach or wherever that pose could be used anywhere um, this chap here obviously he's our oarsman um, and I've actually done a water test there I'll show you what that looks like um, but he's quite well detailed as well again there's a little bit of flash here and there 
uh, which is a little bit disappointing. So I'd say the only disappointing thing with this set is there's no officer to speak of and um, there's uh, a bit of flash on this. I'm not saying they're all going to have flash, possibly I just got a bad batch but um, you know it's worth bearing in mind and like I say the equipment shown on the uh, on the picture you know and even in the description I've not seen any evidence of that yet so <clears throat> again this is the standard fare sprue from the 132 um, although these do look better in 172, I still think this guy is just so bland um, as to be virtually irrelevant. Um, he's very flashy in this set as well. Very, very flashy. Um, the Browning machine gun, obviously that's fair enough. Um, would have been nice. I mean, for instance, we could have done away with this chap and just had a loader or something in there. And that would have made, made all the difference there. Again, not much equipment on these, but that was made evident in the 132. Um, flip them over. Let's have a look. Detail very Spartan on this, so um, not as good as the 8th Army Africa Corps set. Um, detail is, it's there, you know, it's enough to get away with, but it's not as, not as good. And they're quite flat, obviously, to make them sit better. So, I mean, you know, you can't really fault. It's, you know, better the devil you know, I guess. But, yeah. You know, you're getting what it says. You know, you're getting... We're getting a decent amount of firepower there, but nowhere near the stuff they reported in the uh, on the side of the box. Here we go. There's our chap there. Standard fare. M1 carbine and M1 garand. Again, sort of just the bare limits of, of what equipment they should have. This guy's the difference because he's the he's the actual 172 new sculpt and he's got a little bit more on there, although not a lot more. So And here's our dinghy and like I say I don't think it's meant to represent any particular dinghy it's just play value alone it does float as you can see and I think it was just designed that way to fit a couple of soldiers in um, just for play factor alone but it does float so if anyone wanted to know yes it does float um, so that is my review of Airfixes 172 World War II US Marines. Is there better sets? Well, Ravel have a set that's not too bad. Um, Waterloo have a very good set, um, and I think that probably nudges the Ravel set. Um, so in terms of what it's saying it is and what it you know it's it's telling a few pork pies here lies um and in terms of what's on offer there's probably better about um but having said that this is an old kit we expect the other kits to come out with something better uh, you know these are more modern releases so but in terms of, you know, does it still stand up? It's not a bad stab. And if they straightened out what they're describing, I think um, I wouldn't really have much of a problem with this kit. So all in all, for the price, you can't really beat it. It's five quid. I mean, if you want a Ravel set, they can be a little bit more. Um, I don't know how much a Waterloo set is, to be honest, um, but I'll imagine it's a bit more than the Airfix set. So um, that was my review of the Airfix 172 World War II US Marines. Semper Fi and uh, we'll see you on the next review. Thanks for watching.